What's going on guys, Nick here and welcome back to another Art Bros video. Today I'm going to be talking about getting concept art jobs, so stay tuned. Alright, so let's dive right in. So this is going to be primarily a discussion video and one of our Discord members actually asked this question. And uh, Nissa said, hi, I am currently desperately in need of a concept art job, but I have no idea where to find a junior opportunity. Feels like everyone is looking for people who already have at least one or two years of experience. And I can see how frustrating this can be because um, it's very you know, deterring to look at a bunch of job listings and every single one says you need experience. And you're kind of like, well, if I can't get a job in the first place, how am I supposed to get the experience to get one of these better jobs? And even when a junior position is saying something like this, you're kind of like, well, where do I start? And the first thing that I want to say is, even though many job descriptions ask for this, I would not listen to this. Um, at the end of the day, your portfolio speaks for itself. And that's what the job recruiters um, and the, uh, the people hiring you are going to be looking for first and foremost. It's always obviously good to have experience, but if you feel strongly enough that your portfolio fits the criteria for the job you're required to do, then you shouldn't be hesitant to um, apply. That being said though, you do need to kind of have an open mind and sort of be realistic about what you're applying for. Um, I'd say it doesn't really hurt to apply just to apply for the experience of the act of applying, but um, you know, these people do look through hundreds and hundreds of portfolios, especially these really big opportunities. And not that you don't want to waste their time, but they are sort of weeding through people and there are things that they're looking for as they're sort of like sifting through people's portfolios. So talking about the portfolio and letting the portfolio speak for itself, the one thing you should keep in, in mind first and foremost is making sure you have a portfolio that fits the job description. Um, don't go applying for a super realistic, you know, concept art position like Naughty Dog where they want you to have highly rendered, detailed, um, concepts and have a graphic design portfolio or a cartoony style portfolio. Um, even though you can paint very well, there's specific things that companies like Naughty Dog, for example, um, are going to want to see. And I want to preface this um, first and foremost as well. I, uh, I'm just speaking through my personal experience. I do have experience professionally as a concept artist, but everything I've done has been freelance. So I haven't gone through um, one of the whole, you know, corporate position things, uh, but I do have friends that have explained a lot of this to me. So I'm sort of relaying what I know back to you, as well as speaking through my own experience and talking to art directors. I did um, speak with, I did get a portfolio review, for example, um, from Rob Rupel, who was the art director, is the art director still at Naughty Dog? I'm not sure anymore. Um, but these are some of the things he explained to me. Um, so let's, let's go back to that example. They want to make sure because everything they're rendering in 3d is so photorealistic, they want to make sure that you can produce concepts very efficiently and very quickly using, um, photo textures and 3d techniques, even though you are a 2d concept artist, um, uh, certain positions like that are going to make sure that you not only have your fundamental skills, but you also are able to incorporate all of the you know, sort of quicken, quicken techniques um, to be able to produce these highly detailed and rendered concepts um, to them so that when you pass them on to the modeler, they know exactly what they're looking for. So that being said, there are other positions. If you're applying for a mobile game company, for example, um, a lot of the mobile games that have a more like cartoony sort of like stylized, I guess, sort of look to them, they're not going to look as much for, you know, you to be able to have the skill set of like photo bashing. They just want to know you can paint very well. They might need to know that you have some very basic understanding of 3D modeling so you can block stuff out for your concept scenes like um, environments and stuff like that and add characters to it or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, they're not going to be looking for like this crazy, like detailed rendered stuff. So yeah, the one thing I wanted to go back to, I'm going to do a whole other portfolio uh, video, but just as sort of a, a general rule, I'd say you want to have at least six to 12 pieces of, uh, of work that is, 
you know, consistent with the type of job you're applying to. So again, if you're applying to a Naughty Dog position, you know, have six to 12 pieces that are in that style. Look at the other concept artists that have produced work for them. And if it is a, um, a job position for a game studio or something that hasn't produced a game yet, you just wanna read the description as, as best as you can and make sure you're hitting all of those key points if they say like, you know, we wanna make sure you have a mastery of lighting or whatever. Maybe they're looking more for an artist that can do sort of like key art sort of illustrations as opposed to just like, like T-pose character concepts or something like that. So just make sure you're thoroughly reading the description and you're producing the, the work that, you know, can fit exactly with them. So I understand you might as you might also say, you know, well, how am I supposed to get a body of work done in the time that you know somebody asks uh, or I'm applying for the job, and you know at at the end of the day, unless a job listing is up for a couple weeks, you're most likely not going to be able to pump out a whole bunch of stuff. So you do want to try to look for job opportunities that fit your general aesthetic. And then, you know, as the years progress and as you continue to produce work, you're going to have that body of work where you can kind of like be like, oh, here's a good sci fi, you know, character concept. And, you know, I have a whole series of sci fi work that I think could fit for, you know, X company. And you can kind of piece that together. Maybe you could touch them up or whatever but you will start building up a portfolio and you will start to see yourself applying to opportunities that fit more your style. And you know, it, it'll all kind of work out that way. So in terms of finding opportunities, there's a couple ways you can go about this. Um, the, the thing that I'd say is most important is in terms of finding opportunities is just networking. Continue to network, continue to meet people. That's how I get most of my work. Um, and you know, I've been in the industry for like six years or so at this point. I've met a lot, a lot of artists, a lot of art directors. And it's one of those things where if you can make a good impression on some somebody, they're more likely to want to work with you. They're more likely to want to hit you up and be like, oh, I remember Nick, he was cool and he has a pretty good portfolio. You know, I know I can trust him to do the work. Um, so it's, it's sort of a counterintuitive way to like the normal process of applying for a job, but making sure you're attending events and you're meeting people, talking to art directors and just like picking people's brains is, is a really great way to sort of stay in somebody's mind and make sure that, um, you know, they might call on you in a couple of years or something like that. Um, but if you're looking for a job right now and you're doing the traditional job hunt, you know, you have Google, you have ArtStation, all of that kind of stuff. And that sort of normal way of going about um, applying for jobs is, um, you know, it goes hand in hand with this portfolio discussion I had. Um, one thing you also want to keep in mind when applying for a job is making sure you have a really good cover letter. And the cover letter is the one thing that shows that you can kind of stand out. And especially if you're getting the opportunity to like email somebody directly, you're not just like filling out one of those generic like online things. Um, make the subject line of your um, of your email like very interesting. Make make it you know just a little quip that has to do with you. Obviously, make sure you write that you're applying for the concept artist position, so they know like what they're what they're looking at or what email they're opening, but. You do want to uh, to make something exciting, make make them want to open up your email because that's the first step. And then after that, you want the body of the email or the cover letter, or whatever, to really like introduce yourself. And um, you know, it's it's important to distinguish yourself differently as a person uh, when applying to these jobs, as well as having a good portfolio, because they are going to be working with you. And there are you know certain kind of key words that you can say and just the way you sort of talk is going to let the the employer know like, okay, this is somebody that I'm going to want to call and interview, you know, to, you know, find out more about them as well as their work. So let your work speak for itself, but also make sure that you are, you know, uh, writing in a, in a nice and pleasing way. Um, I would also say that your, uh, your resume or CV, uh, it, it, matters, 
but I think your portfolio and your sort of way of speaking is, you know, the most important facets of applying for a job. And then it's kind of like your resume or CV is like the cherry on top. They, they get to know you with your cover letter. They see, oh, this person has awesome art. And then they look at your resume and they're like, oh, he's, you know, or he or she or whatever has uh, showcased at this event and, you know, has worked on these jobs or whatever. And if you are somebody co going in with not a lot of experience, just, you know, uh, try your best to put on there your, your education and whatever like team projects possibly that you had. And I can, I can go into a whole other video as well about like resume portfolio building and um, cover letters and stuff like that. But just you, you want to make sure that you sort of have like the whole package when you're applying to the, to the job and that's gonna, you know, help you the most with a first impression sort of, sort of thing. I'm sure you've heard me say this a million times, but um, I sort of got my start by going to a LuxCon um, repeatedly and networking with some of the other artists. And that was one of those situations where um, they kept telling me to come back every year, like, oh, just tweak this, work on this and come back next year, show me your portfolio next year. And I kept doing that. And I finally got to the point where, you know, I, I was assigned fantasy flight cards because I built up a, um, sort of like network with the art directors of that company and they sort of knew me and and I I they not necessarily trained me but pushed me to that point where I was able to submit work that I was happy with and they were happy with and we could sort of like you know work something out together so you do want to make sure that you're continuously you know making friends with people and uh yeah just like listening to advice in terms of your growth um Lastly, um, in terms of this finding opportunities section, just make sure you are talking to the friends you already have and don't be afraid to ask for work. Uh, it, it's never, you know, it, it, there's no shame in, um, in sort of like asking people for work. Don't, don't sound needy or anything like that. But um, there have been times where I've, you know, needed, needed some uh, freelance work and I've hit up one of my friends just been like, Hey, do you know of anything going on? Do you have anything for me? And if they don't, like, you know, chances are they might be able to recommend me to somebody, which has happened as well, and that's really cool. So that's another reason to build up your network and another reason why I've pushed this Discord community so hard because now you guys have this opportunity to be able to, like, sort of hang out and talk to each other and hopefully find some opportunities amongst yourselves, maybe collaborate on projects. Um, Okay, so here's some more um, like unconventional ways of finding work and applying for opportunities. So I've never tried this myself. I have worked on projects that went to Kickstarter, but I have heard that this is a good tactic for finding work. So you figure, okay, this this board game, this uh, this comic book, this video game, this movie, whatever, just got funded on Kickstarter. Maybe they surpassed their goal, and they're like, huh we could spend this money on some extra artists you know there you could you can hit these people up just look through kickstarter and see the the projects that had just been funded and be like hey i'm an artist i'm looking for work you know i really liked your project i think it's really cool i'd love to work with you and just see what happens it's not very hard to find you know people's contact information especially reaching out on linkedin or facebook or whatever um that's the other thing i should mention as well going back to the sort of social media thing um, make sure that once you apply to a job and, and you sort of have to feel out the situation, but I've done this a couple times and it's worked out for me. Um, I have a sort of kind of expansive LinkedIn, um, uh, network. And what's nice is because I'm friends with a lot of friends, I'm either like second or like first or second friends, however it works on LinkedIn with a lot, a lot of people. So, um, I will apply to a job or be seeking an opportunity. And as soon as I send out that initial email, I'll find a person that works for that company and see if they're like closely connected to my network. And if they are, you're able to send them a, a private message and try to link in with them. And I would just be like, hey, I, I just found this awesome uh, opportunity on ArtStation or whatever. And I just applied, I just wanted to let you know um, I would love to link in with you and get to know you a little bit better and um, just let me know if you have any questions about my work. I'm happy to, I'm happy to answer. 
I don't know if you could say all that because I think they only give you like 112 words or something, but you get the idea. Just try to be friendly and try to, you know, open up opportunities for yourself with other people. And um, you, you'd be surprised how how well people respond to you being friendly, especially when you're seeking an opportunity and and sort of putting yourself out there. People like when you're more open. And if you're letting yourself be open with these people, they're going to, you know, be more likely to like respond and at least be like, hey, I'm sorry, you know, you're, um, you sound like an awesome person. I'll keep you in mind, whatever, but your portfolio is not at this point right now or whatever. Like I've gotten that and it's at least now I have that person in um, my network. And if I ever wanted to improve my portfolio, at least now I have a direct contact where I can be like, Hey, I see this job opened up again, you know, Steve or whatever. And, uh, I, uh, I, I worked on those things that we had discussed previously last year or whatever, a couple months ago. And I would love to resubmit, like, what do you think? And that way you have sort of a leg in before you even apply. And you might get some hints as to like what they're specifically looking for. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm sure I missed something, but if you guys have any other questions or you want me to elaborate further, uh, please hit me up in Discord or write a comment um, down below or whatever. And um, yeah, just look forward to more of these like answer videos because you guys have been asking a lot of really good questions and uh, this is really fun getting to answer your questions. So thanks and um, until next time, uh, yeah, keep on watching. All right, later guys.